If you're a brand new artist out there that struggles painting trees with acrylic paint, hey, don't worry. In this video right here, we're gonna show you four different ways to easily paint trees with acrylic paint. Here we go. What is up all you awesome creative people? Wild here. You know what? In today's video, I had to call on the big guns. My friend Tally Who Art paints the most beautiful acrylic trees I've ever seen. I mean, just look at these things. These things are beautiful and immaculate. And he says you can paint them too. But you first have to learn the basics. Tally's gonna show you and I four simple ways to paint four simple trees. This is perfect for new artists and beginners. And before you know it, you'll be painting trees just like this. So here we go. Let's start off with everybody's favorite tree, the pine tree, which most people seem to struggle with. We are gonna start with our darkest color first, which is a very dark sap green. We're gonna take our fan brush and load it full of paint. As you work from the side of your brush down in a triangle zigzag motion, you'll eventually open up your brush a little bit more. This will expose more of the brush, creating leaf texture on the outside of your tree, which is what you want. Don't be afraid to reload your brush here. The biggest mistake brand new artists make is they feel like they have to make one tree out of the loading of the brush. Feel free to go back and load the brush multiple times, depending on how full you want your trees to be. Also, don't be afraid to make your tree patchy because some trees are naturally patchy in nature. With a clean brush, we can start to work on our mid-tones. Create a mixture of a mid-tone color. For Tally, he generally likes to take his green and yellow to mix it up, so that way it looks all marbly, as if there's different colors of pine needles on the tree. Essentially, you do the same zigzag motion going down your pine tree as you use to create it. This will make natural gradients and diffusion of light go across your tree. Make sure you think about where your light source is coming from because you always wanna make sure your highlights and midtones are naturally fading off into your darker side. Just a quick tally and wild note for you. A really cool trick is if you add midtone colors, make sure you leave your paint marbly. Add a few different colors in there because it shows the changing of seasons in your tree and it's gonna add a lot of cool different textures and colors to your tree, making them pop even more. When it comes to adding midtones and even your highlights, Tally's a huge fan of the fan brush, but really only working with the edge or the side of the fan brush. This gives them more control to create different types of textures and leaves. Also, it gives them a little more control of not eliminating all of his dark tones because you gotta remember that tree's gonna stand out when you have a lot of contrast to it and it's gonna add that natural fade from light to dark. Let's move on to adding our highlights. And the very first step to painting highlights on a tree is Actually, don't paint them. Wait just a moment. Wait for the base tone and your midtones to tacky up a little bit. This will make applying highlights a lot easier. Now, when you're making your highlight color, we generally wanna make it a lighter color than our midtone. And to do this, the easiest thing to do is mix up some colors and kind of test it. Hold your paint next to your tree and your midtones to see how it'll naturally flow and how much highlight you want to add. This is actually a great tip from Tally. He loves to test every color before he applies it to his actual element in his painting. When it comes to painting highlights, Tally likes to use the same exact method as his midtones, using the edge of the bristles and the side of his fan brush. Essentially, gives him more control on how he wants to fade the sun or the light source across the tree. And this allows you to really build in multiple layers without overdoing it. But what if you overdo it? Hey, that's completely fine. Everything is fixable. You can clean up any blobs or kind of any spots that are undesired with a dry brush. Simply just tap it in and fade it down. I actually really love to use a dagger brush here because of that swoop motion. It gives you a little bit more control, but hey, any brush will pretty much do. Now we just have to add in our trunk and all we do is use a dark mixture of brown and use a dagger brush and go straight down the middle to create your base of your trunk. Also, you can feel free to add in little segments of the trunk going up and down through your pine tree. Just remember to add certain segments, but keep it in a straight line. The next tree we're gonna move on to is our African trees. Now, essentially, these are where just leaves are on top of the end of the stems and they kind of look like little domes or little shelves on top of stems. So we wanna start with our trunk and our branches first. Tally's gonna take a dark brown mixture and kind of just fade up with a dagger brush. Now the paint here is in a heavy cream texture. This allows paint to glide naturally off of his brush so that way he can add natural 
cracks and bumps and striations into the trunk and into the branches. Now, since our paint is more of a milky texture here, before we add any leaves or anything on top of it, we're gonna let it dry for just a few moments, okay? Now, when it comes to adding base leaves and midtones and highlights to this African tree, it's the same steps as a pine tree. However, you're gonna use the fan brush in a different way. Rather than using more of the side or edge of the fan brush, we're gonna use the entire fan brush and put a lot more pressure so the brush blooms open and work in an upside down U motion. That's how you're gonna create these beautiful little kind of like umbrella effects or different shelves of leaves blooming out from all these different branches. Now, don't be afraid to be a little heavy handed here because these trees will have a lot of leaves at the top of the tree. Once you've laid in your base color and you may have been heavy handed, you can leave a few moments there to let it tacky up. Then you add your midtones and your highlights. Remember to think about where your light source is coming from because you want it to naturally fade again from your lights to your darks. Since we have more of a trunk here, we can always go back with our dagger brush at the end with a nice light brown and white mixture and add in some highlight bark details to our trunk, which is really gonna make this tree stand out. Let's move on to tree number three. <laughs> Sounded weird, but all right, we'll roll with it. It's gonna be our bushy tree, kind of like your everyday tree that has a bunch of leaves on it because you know it's getting a lot of sunlight and water. Essentially, this is the same steps as the last two trees. We're gonna start with our trunk, which again is a dark mixture of brown using a dagger brush to a milky-like texture. What makes tree number three so unique and fun is you actually don't really care too much about the leaves here. It's the trunk that makes it stand out. Take that dagger brush with that loose paint on there and actually be a little loose with your hand. When you do that, you're actually gonna add like bumps and knots and natural gnarls into the trunk. I can't believe I nailed that word. Awesome for me. And this is really gonna make your tree stand out to be more natural. Not every tree goes straight up. They go in different directions with the sunlight depending on nature. And that's what's really gonna make your tree stand out. So spend a little more time on the trunk here. Once you've added in your trunk and your branches, again, same steps as before. Add in with your fan brush, your dark green mixture. Now you can actually be a little more loose here, but don't fill your entire tree with green. Leave some white spaces and some gaps in between because remember, you can see through a lot of trees here. So think about you know, how you're gonna lay your leaves on the end of your branches. Now, once you've thought about that, all you gotta do is add your midtones and add your highlights. And as always, remember to think about your light source and how it comes across. Now, in all of our prior examples, we've been having our light source come from right to left. But in this tree here, I told Tally to make the light source kind of in front, which is why you see it highlighted more all around the tree. So this way you can see a good example of your base tone of green, your mid tones of greens, yellows, and oranges, and your highlight color. So this way you kind of have a different way of looking at a tree. With all of your leaves and highlights painted in, you know, spend a little time on the detail of the bark of the tree. Again, since you added all those cool like knots and ridges and gnarls, that's the word of the day. We're gonna have like a Pee Wee Herman word of the day here. <laughs> That'll probably get copyrighted, but who cares? Now you wanna add the highlights because that's really gonna accentuate all those turns and bumps and gnarls within that branch and in that trunk there. Or sometimes even in the roots. Don't forget the roots. Roots sometimes show on a tree. All right, full disclosure here. When we set out to do this video, it was gonna be four trees. We couldn't think of a fourth tree. So we came up with the idea of showing you how to paint the side of a tree, which you'll see a lot on the edges of a painting. Cause you know, elements of the painting come in from outside the canvas at times. Now, these are all of the same steps rolled into one tree here. Depending on what you wanna start with, you can start with your trunk or you can start with the body of the leaves of the tree. You can pick and choose what you want, but essentially it's a lot of the same steps. But you wanna think about how your tree would be formed coming from the outside of your canvas. So you gotta kinda of visualize here a little bit. But once you've shaped your tree with your dark brown mixture, you add your midtones in the same way, and then your highlights in the same way. If you're struggling to make anything stand out, all you need to do is just give a few moments between each and every layer. So that way, the base layer has a moment to tack you up, making it easier for the next layer to be stuck on top of that and repeat and repeat and repeat. That's really the trick here, is sometimes going a little bit slower allows your paint to tack you up, making it easier to paint on top of. You don't have to do everything in, you know, 
moments or seconds. Take some time, enjoy the process. And once you've nailed all these trees, it's really gonna make your painting stand out and be more natural. But what if you don't wanna make your painting more natural? You wanna make it, you know, surreal. You wanna make it eye-catching. You want it to have some awesome focal points. Well, I'm here to help you out and so is Tally. I recommend taking a look at this video over to the side where we're gonna show you how to make an awesome and simple landscape just like Bob Ross, but with a great focal point and done in acrylic paint. I'll check you next time. Take care and of course, peace.